It's the Persian Empire. Hello and welcome to Archaeologists Anonymous, a safe space for archaeology addicts out there. On today's episode, we'll be going over the top five things you didn't know about ancient Persia. Persia is often called the Forgotten Empire because though it's a really cool civilization, not that many people talk about it. That is, outside of when they lost to the Greeks in the Greco-Persian Wars, and when Alexander the Great conquered them by throwing a rager of a party across Western Asia with occasional battles. It doesn't help that our boy Alex burned Persepolis and with it, a lot of the records. I'm angry with him about that. <laughs> so. Let's talk about five things that you didn't know about the archaeology of ancient Persia, which is too often swept under the rug. Number five. Ancient Persia built refrigerators and air conditioning. They built a structure called a yakchal, and you can see that here. This was made out of clay and helped maintain the interior temperature. At first, these buildings were used to store ice, but then the Persians used them to store cold food. You put some ice in there, you put the food in there with it, and it would keep the temperature nice and cold. I would turn Gotham into an icy graveyard. To cool and ventilate buildings, the Persians invented these wind towers or wind catchers, which they put on the roofs of buildings. These would push warm air up and out of the building and bring cool air in, keeping the buildings nice and cool during those hot Persian summers. We're cool for the summer. Sometimes they combined with kanats, which were basically underground aqueducts, to create especially cool air. Persians also used kanats to irrigate crops and maintain a water supply in the dry climate. An added benefit of Persian wind catchers is they're super aesthetic. Modern AC systems do not look this pretty. Number four, the Persian post office. Under the orders of Darius I, the Persians built a network of roads throughout the empire to make getting around easier. And they created these checkpoints along the road where mailmen on horseback could rest and resupply. This made it easy for messengers to travel long distances and increased the speed of communication in the Persian empire. Herodotus described the unofficial motto of the Persian postal system as, Whatever the conditions, it may be snowing, raining, blazing hot or dark, they never fail to complete their assigned journey in the fastest possible time. Which the US Postal Service basically stole to be their motto. Did you know that when you get your mail, it's in a tradition going all the way back to ancient Persia? Well, now you do. Number three, cat combat. <coughs> Now that we're in the middle of the list, here's a fun fact about how the Persians conquered Egypt. Well, fun if you're the Persians, not if you're the Egyptians. The King Cambyses II rolled up to Egypt to get on his conquering, and on the way ran into the heavily fortified city of Pelusium. Now, Cambyses knew that the Egyptians loved and worshipped cats. So, he had all his soldiers paint the Egyptian goddess Bastet on their shields, and this goddess was often depicted with a cat head. And they also rounded up cats and drove them before the army on the way to the city. The Egyptians did not want to shoot arrows at the army because they didn't want to hurt the cats. And partially because of this cat cover that they had built, they were able to successfully take the city. This battle has inspired a lot of crazy legends, including that the Persians actually threw cats at the Egyptians, but it's unclear exactly what happened here. It does seem, however, that a major component of the Persian victory at Pelusium was that they successfully herded cats. Number two, Persian religious tolerance. For most of its run, the Persian Empire was pretty religiously tolerant, especially under Cyrus the Great. In the places the empire expanded into, the Persians generally left the local religious traditions untouched. Now this was not 100% because the Persians were nice. It helped to reduce the risk of rebellion if people were allowed to worship whoever they wanted. However, it did mean that ancient Persia was an incredibly rich and diverse place in terms of religious culture. Cyrus the Great made especially good on this Persian promise of multicultural empire when he ended the captivity of the Jews. I'm free! 
The Jews were previously captives under the Babylonians, but Cyrus the Great freed them and issued an edict for the rebuilding of the Jewish temple in Jerusalem, which had been destroyed. This was all codified on the Cyrus Cylinder, which has a declaration of equality written into it, and this has often been called the first declaration of human rights. What a nice move. You go, Cyrus. The Persians also had their own really cool religion called Zoroastrianism, but they never forced this on other people. Zoroastrianism is so interesting I just might make another video on its archaeology. Number one. One final thing that you might not have known about ancient Persia is that they celebrated birthdays. <laughs> They actually have the oldest recorded instance of birthday parties. People feasted, they had cakes, lit candles, gave presents. Sound familiar? However, there is one major difference between Persian birthday parties and today's birthday parties, and that was you weren't supposed to blow out the candles, because blowing out the candles was a sign of, you know, bad fortune or your life ending too soon. So if you find yourself in ancient Persia, don't blow out the candle at the birthday party. <laughs> Furthermore, it was especially significant in Persia to have a tree planted in a person's name on their birthday, so Team Trees approves of ancient Persian birthdays. Today, we will be planting 20 million trees. So that was five things that you might not have known about ancient Persia. I hoped you learned a thing or two. I have been Sean Sylvia of Archaeologists Anonymous. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in another video.